Hi there, welcome to SVMed Lectures. Today we'll be taking a look at capillary fluid exchange, Starling forces, as well as the Starling equation. So let's get started. In the body, fluid can exist in one of two places, either inside of cells, which we call the intracellular compartment, or outside of cells, which we call the extracellular compartment. The extracellular compartment is further divided into the intravascular space within the blood vessels, as well as the interstitial space between the cells. In this lecture, we'll be taking a look at the starting forces as well as the starting equation in relation to the flu fluid movement between the inter intravascular space, in particular the capillaries, and the interstitium. So this is a nice schematic of the fluid compartments in the body. Here on this side, we have the intracellular compartment inside of cells, and here on this side, we have the extracellular compartment outside of cells, which is further divided into the interstitial space as well as the intravascular space, in particular inside of capillaries and movement of fluid across this blood vessel wall is normally tightly regulated so that the right amount of fluid is present in the blood vessel as well as the interstitial space. But however, this process can break down, and as a result, an increased volume of fluid can exist in either of these two spaces, and these can cause clinical symptoms. Say, for example, if you had an increased volume of fluid in the interstitial space, that can cause edema, whereas if you had an increased volume of fluid in the intravascular space, that can cause hypertension. So what are capillaries? Capillaries are small, thin blood vessels that connect the arteries and the veins. Their thin, thin walls allow oxygen, nutrients, carbon dioxide, and waste products to pass to and from the tissue cells. Capillaries have a semi-permeable membrane, which means that they allow certain substances to pass through it, but not others. It, they are impermeable to plasma proteins, but permeable to water, ions, and other small solutes. So now let's take a look at the starting equation right here. We have four forces as well as two factors. The forces determine the direction of fluid movement. They are the two hydrostatic pressures as well as the two oncotic pressures. The factors determine the amount of fluid movement. They are the two coefficients, the fluid permeability coefficient as well as the reflection coefficient for proteins. So now let's take a look at the four starling forces, the two hydrostatic pressures as well as the two oncotic pressures or colloid osmotic pressures. We have the hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries, the hydrostatic pressure in the interstitium, the oncotic pressure in the capillaries, as well as the oncotic pressure in the interstitium. So what is meant uh, by hydrostatic pressure? Hydrostatic pressure is a force generated by the pressure of the fluid on the capillary walls, either by the blood plasma or the interstitial fluid. Hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries occurs when there's an increased pressure of fluid inside of the capillaries. And this is a result of the pressure coming from the heart pumping. The hydrostatic pressure will move fluid from the capillaries into the interstitium, as represented by this arrow here. Whereas the hydrostatic pressure in the interstitium occurs when there's an increased pressure of fluid in the interstitium compared to inside of the capillaries. And as a result, this hydrostatic pressure will move fluid from the uh, interstitium into the capillaries, as represented by this arrow right here. What is meant by oncotic pressure? Oncotic pressure is exerted by the proteins either in the blood plasma or the interstitial fluid. And these proteins attract water to the hydration shell of these, uh, these uh, proteins. Oncotic pressure occurs when there are two fluid compartments with different solid concentrations that are separated by a semi-permeable membrane. And since capillaries are semi-permeable, the more concentrated part of the extracellular compartment, usually the capillary, will move water towards it, as represented by this arrow right here. However, if there are more protein solutes in the interstitium, then the oncotic pressure in the interstitium increases, and as a result, water will move from the capillaries into the interstitium, as represented by this arrow right here. So, now let's take a look at the two factors. We have the capillary fluid permeability coefficient, Kf, as well as the reflection coefficient for protein, sigma. And these two factors determine the amount of fluid movement. So Kf determines the permeability characteristics of the membrane to fluids. If capillaries become more permeable, then more fluid can move across the membrane. However, if the uh, capillary barrier is thickened, a process referred to as sclerosis, movement will be restricted. Sigma represents the permeability of the membrane to a given solute. This reflection coefficient is a number between 0 and 1 that describes the ease in which a solid permeates, permeates a membrane. If the reflection coefficient is 1, that means that the solute is impermeable, 
and will be retained in the original compartment and it, this creates an oncotic pressure that draws water towards it. An example is serum albumin, which has a reflection coefficient close to 1. Whereas if the reflection coefficient is 0, that means that the solute is completely permeable. And as a result, this will not exert any oncotic pressure since the solids can move back and forth. And thus will not cause water to flow into the compartment. An example is urea, which has a reflection coefficient close to zero. <clears throat> so now, taking a look at the Australian equation again, JV right here represents the direction and the amplitude of fluid movement. The P represents hydrostatic pressure. The pi represents um, oncotic pressure. The subscript C represents capillary. The subscript I represents the interstitium. So when we take a look at this portion of the equation right here, PC, subscript C, represents the hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries, whereas P, subscript I, represents the hydrostatic pressure in the interstitium. So the difference between these two values is the net hydrostatic pressure. And in order to get a positive value for the net hydrostatic pressure, hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries has to be greater than the hydrostatic pressure in the interstitium. And as a result of this increased um, uh, hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries, uh, fluid will move from the capillaries and into the interstitium. When we take a look at this portion of the equation right here, the um, pi subscript C represents the oncotic pressure within the capillaries, and pi subscript um, I represents the uh, oncotic pressure within the interstitium. And the difference between these represents the net oncotic pressure. In order to get a positive value here, the um, oncotic pressure in the capillaries has to be greater than the oncotic pressure in the interstitium. As a result of this increased um, oncotic pressure in the capillaries, water uh, or fluid will move from the um, interstitium into the capillaries. So when we want to uh, find the total net force on the fluid, we have to find the difference between the two nets, the, the net hydrostatic pressure as well as the net oncotic pressure. So, when we take a look at this diagram, it represents it very nicely. Um, if the difference between these two nets is positive, that means that the net hydrostatic pressure is much greater than the net oncotic pressure. And for the net um, hydrostatic pressure to be greater, the, the hydrostatic pressure of the capillaries has to be greater than the hydrostatic pressure of the interstitium. As a result, um, if the uh, hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries is greater, that means that fluid will move from the capillaries into the interstitium. It will move, like I said here, fluid will move out of the capillaries and into this interstitium. However, if the difference is negative uh, between these two nets, that means that the net hydrostatic pressure is less than the uh, net oncotic pressure. You know, the on net oncotic pressure is uh, greater. In order for the net oncotic pressure to be greater, like I said in the previous slide, the oncotic pressure in the capillary has to be greater than the oncotic pressure in the interstitium. If the oncotic pressure in the capillary is greater, that means the fluid will be drawn into the capillaries, as represented uh, by this diagram. So when we put everything together, um, the calculated numerical value represents the amplitude of the fluid movement, whereas the sign in front of the numerical value represents the direction of fluid movement. And if the, if, the, if, the, if the sign is positive, as uh, shown in this uh, previous slide, if, the, if it's positive, fluid will move out of the capillaries and into the interstitium. Whereas if the sign in front of the numerical value is negative, fluid will move from the interstitium into the capillaries. So that is the end of uh, this lecture. Uh, remember to never give up on your dreams. Just like Netflix, Netflix started back in 1997. They only started with um, selling and renting out DVDs. Now look at them. They're, they're probably the, one of the most notorious online streaming platforms. The reason being because they didn't give up their dreams. So good luck with all your studies. Wishing you all the best. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Take care.